Hello. Today I want to talk about a movie that is uh, turning 30 years old this year. Um, it's a film that, uh, you know, it, it basically has a cult status. Um, and um, it's one that over the years, people who haven't seen it before uh, have probably heard about it at some point and uh, they eventually see it at someday and that film is uh leon the professional originally it, it in a lot of european countries it's just called leon here it was called the professional and so uh the blu-ray and also even the dvd is just called you know leon the professional they're just kind of basically combining both uh titles into one stars uh jean Re Jean Renault, Gary Oldman, Natalie Portman, and this was her first role, as well as Danny Alejo. Yeah, Alejo. Uh, um, written and directed by Luc Besson, and um, yeah, it's a very good film. Um, uh, Renault plays a uh, Leon. He's a you know professional hitman. <laughs> Um, very good at his job, and um, Natalie Portman plays uh, Matilda, um, who in the beginning we see uh, she's neighbors with Leon, and uh, her family is very dysfunctional. The only one she really loves in her family is her little brother, uh, and her dad is somebody who is mixed up with. Uh, corrupt uh, DEA agents uh, led by uh, Norman Stan Stansfield um, played by Gary Oldman and uh, they're uh, yeah, basically uh, he, uh, the guy is uh, you know, her father is uh, keeping some cocaine for himself rather than you know giving the entirety uh, uh, to the DEA, DEA agents. Like, there's, like, an arrangement and everything, but he's just holding back. So, uh, the next day they come back, and um, Matilda goes out to get some groceries uh, from a nearby uh, grocery store. And uh, Leon drinks a lot of milk, uh, so she gets him some milk. And uh, while she's gone, Stansfield and his guys go and, uh, you know, uh, kill uh, her family, like one by one. Like her start, uh, mother is killed. She's in the bathtub. She's killed. Um, her sister's running around and uh, gets shot with a shotgun also. And then uh, uh, her dad, he's uh, got a gun nearby and he's just basically trying to wait for the right moment to uh, 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 shoot them in order to try and get out but uh when he finally does you know uh shoots stansfield in the arm and kills one of his guys and then he runs you know shoots in the stansfield uh especially shoots and kills him um and then his guys uh go to f find where the uh rest of the cocaine is and um little brother is hiding under a bed and uh you know they're looking for him in his room and wherever else and uh eventually his little brother runs out and then he's eventually killed because well there was somebody something running so dude just unloads uh an uzi and he is killed and uh as uh 
everything is basically on trying to wind down after everything that just happened and then eventually the drugs are found and looking for uh you know and uh, they realize that not everybody in the family is dead and so when she comes back <laughs> and sees what's happened she goes to leon's ha uh door and he after ringing the doorbell he eventually lets her in and uh Yeah, and, and that's also when she overhears that her brother's dead. Like, you know, you shot a four-year-old, and we're like, what's wrong with you? And then very good questions to ask is the one dude who did it. He's, eh, I think it'd be fair to say he might not be completely all there. Just, you know, the few times you just see him <laughs> throughout the film. And then from there, uh, it, Matilda basically, you know, has a crush on him, on Leon, and says she loves him, and after a while, and, um, Leon decides to help, uh, or to show her how to, uh, uh, like, be a cleaner, like him, and, uh, by, like, with a rifle, and has paintballs to Shoot at somebody, oh, well, there's like a rule of no women and children. And, uh, of course, early in the film, the beginning, you see just what he does for, uh, basically like an everyday thing. How, uh, he goes about doing, uh, um, uh, going on performing a, a job for, uh, Tony, played by Danny Aleo, and, um, yeah, it's, it's just a very good film if you haven't seen it, um, now the fact that, you know, Natalie Portman was 12 when she made this, as well as certain uh, instances with the character in Leon, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, that's fairly creepy, um, you know, people are like, you know, sexualizing this girl, um, and a, a woman who, who was, uh, very young and she married Luc Besson, um, said that, that this film was in a way, uh, inspired by his relationship with her. Um, I believe, uh, she was 16 when, uh, the two married and obviously he was quite older than her. So that's uh, very uh, odd and uh, creepy and just not right. Um, and I'll be like, oh, it's a different time. Well, uh, stuff like that is just plain no. Uh, just no. Um, though I will say the characterization of Leon, he's not particularly, you know, really infatuated with Matilda, like she is with him, you know, you know, he cares about her in the sense like he doesn't want her to die, he doesn't want anything bad to happen to her, and you know, is fairly protective of her, you know, and you know, in that regard, but you know, in terms of like love, like, uh, like you know, any kind of love that he has for her is not the kind that she has for him, it's you know, he's like, you know, he. He even says, like, you know, for him, like, he he, he needs a, to growing up. He, he needs a lot of growing up to do, you know. You know, where, uh, like, he's a grown up, but he has a lot of growing up to do. Whereas Matilda, with everything she's experienced in her life, she's already grown up, but, you know, isn't a grown up yet. Um, and that's an interesting uh, point in uh for it but um i know with that whole everything with age and everything with the, those two a lot of people like even though it is regarded as a very good film well-made film and everything it's you know very good um at the same time you know there is that aspect that's a you know is a bit creepy but the way it's handled in the film is you know, whatever 
awkward creepiness would could exist it isn't really present so that's good um but still you know it's kind of like in terms of the uh what's said to be the real life influence is another thing and that's kind of you know that that's yeah no that's gross uh um having said all that though again yeah the the acting is excellent the writing is well done as is the director you know every you know, you know everything about this film on a, from how it's made and executed is excellent you know um and there's a lot more but uh, obviously i could say to it but don't want to go too far and potentially you know uh sp uh spoil things for anybody who hasn't seen it um but you know uh, it's the film that really uh was able to show uh natalie portman and uh and what she can bring to in terms of acting uh this film also i believe uh introduced jean renault to uh audiences in america for sure um of course everybody already knew of gary oldman by that point but you know he plays a villain here um i remember he's like he, he said once you know he when you really look at his career and look at all the characters he hasn't played a whole lot of villains it's just there was a certain time span particularly in the 90s and even in the early 2000s where he seemed to be playing a lot of bad guys and um, one thing that's interesting about his character in this film is yeah he likes to listen to you know he's listened to beethoven you know and uh uh later this the in 1994 uh, or possibly before uh, uh, i think that was after though uh, there was the film immortal beloved which he pl played Beethoven, so that was kind of it's kind of interesting how this character in this film is a fan of uh, Mo uh, Beethoven, but you know he uh, later would play Beethoven, so um, that's probably a film I'll talk about at another time. Um, Mozart also gets uh, mentioned, and uh, yeah, just kind of reminds me of. Uh, Amadeus, which is a very good film. Um, this Blu-ray has uh, both the theatrical cut as well as the extended version. The extended version has 24 more minutes in the theatrical version. Um, but also, this Blu-ray is region-free, so that's pretty cool. Um, uh, it aren't too many blu-rays out there in the world that are region free obviously there are some like this but usually they're all region locked i live in region a land and so you know it's, something is in yeah region a yeah it's in region b or c you know usually i kind of out of luck because i don't have a uh, region free player uh, for blu-rays or DVDs, um, but you know, if I really wanted to take this and perhaps a few other Blu-rays that are region-free, go somewhere like in Europe or Asia. Well, though there are certain Asian countries, I believe, like Japan, that are region A. So, <laughs> in, in an instance like that, that wouldn't completely matter. But you know, go to a region somewhere, the like region B or region C. I could take this film and. Uh, I could watch it on whatever kind of Blu-ray player would be there. So, you know, wouldn't have to be region free. I don't think I would necessarily do that. But if I ever, if the, uh, you know, uh, if the desire ever uh, arose at some point and I was going to travel somewhere, I absolutely could bring this. But, yeah. Very good film. Um might have touched on the whole part about the whole thing of being fairly creepy possibly a little too long but yeah, i thought that was a good at least to address that but yeah when the film it was very it 
was handled quite well, at least compared to what the real life uh, inspiration is said to have, you know, from what I've read, happened. You know, that's that's just creepy and weird and blah. Yeah, uh, this is, but this is a very good film overall and um, worth watching if you haven't seen it before. Um, I hope the whole oddity thing with the Matilda and Leon will uh, make you uninterested, honestly. Like, like that, like, it might sound bad, but when you watch the film, if you haven't seen it before, it isn't actually all that bad. It's, it's, you know, for Leon, it's a fairly innocent thing. Like, he's not very, like, with, you know, anything like romantically or anything like that so there is no ill intent on his part you know in that sense that aspect of the character he's fairly innocent uh, to say the least um, I'm sure you can find other words to describe the character in the whole uh, thing of love um, and one thing that I thought was kind of cool was he uh yeah he likes old movies like he goes and sees a Gene Kelly film at the beginning of the movie and he's, he really likes it. And they play a game of, you know, guess who... Actually, like, guess who she's... Uh, she is, like, he doesn't know Madonna. He doesn't know Marilyn Monroe. He seems to know Charlie Chaplin. With the mustache and everything. But he just can't put his, uh, uh, you know, finger on it. Uh, but when she's doing with Gene Kelly, he knows who that is. Um... Also, um, uh, he he goes to be like you know dresses like to be John Wayne. First, she dresses Clint Eastwood, but then he's like yeah, John Wayne. Uh, I'm like, oh, well, you know, yeah, she was at least close. You know, they both were are well known for westerns. Uh, Clint Eastwood got his career really started with westerns, like with Rawhide, and then of course. There, you know, the Dollars Trilogy, and then, of course, he did, you know, Dirty Harry, and then has made so many excellent films. You know, John Wayne was primarily known for his westerns, and uh, he did some other non-western stuff. Uh, but, yeah, now I'm kind of going on tangents, not completely related to the film. But, anyway, uh, this is a very good film, good performances. I've heard some people thought Gary Oldman should have been up for Best Supporting Actor for this film. I could see that. Um, would have been worth a nomination. Might not have won, but hey, you know. Um, yeah. Just a matter of who to take out to insert him. That's always the thing. Sometimes it can be easy. Sometimes it's difficult, but yeah. I love Gary Oldman and his performances, and, and Natalie Portman's excellent as well, as is Jean Reno and Danny Oleo, may he rest in peace. You know, and, uh, very good film, excellent uh, film, well made. Now I'm going to just essentially just repeat myself, so I should probably just end it here. If you have seen this film, uh, tell me what you think. Do you enjoy it? Do you uh, uh, dislike it? Do you think it's fine? Do you think it's all right? Or, yeah, like some stuff you like, some stuff you don't like. Like, you know, it's a mixed, mixed bag. Uh, you can leave uh, your comments uh, down below if you'd like. Um, but yeah. Uh, please have a great day. Uh, Hope you've had a great week, and I hope you'll have a great weekend, and I'll see you all next time. Please take care. Bye.